In this week's video, which is covering week one and two, which is soft skills, we will be covering the things that a technician in the HVAC field need to know and understand uh, on a daily basis when they're in the, in the uh, customer's home or in a business, or matter of fact, even if they're at their job, uh, they need to understand conduct and how to deal with certain things. One of the things we hear as instructors from other contractors and employers is that we need to teach more about uh, skills that uh, their technicians need when they're dealing with customers. And some of these things was considered soft skills is dealing with um, really discovering ethical behavior, how to deal with people, being honest in everything you do uh, with the customers and the employer, uh, but communication and taking care of paperwork. All these things are extremely important. So we're going to discuss uh, for a short time these uh, critical areas that is, might not be technical uh, knowledge, but definitely it is knowledge that all technicians need to have to excel in their job. Dealing with uh, communication, we could be the best technician out there, but if we cannot uh, deal with customers and how to relate to customers in a positive way, we could turn customers off and, believe it or not, even have uh, uh, a situation where a, a customer do not want the technician to come to their business or to their home to, to perform work. They may not understand that they are competent in skills, but the issue where it comes into dealing with uh, them personally, they may not feel comfortable with them. So, being able to communicate uh, the knowledge of the problem of the job, but also communicating the necessity of the things that need to be done uh, to their equipment. And if they don't trust you, of course, they not understanding that it may work after you leave, but they have this feeling. So, understanding, being able to verbally uh, or orally uh, communicate um, to the customer that the things that you found is uh, taken care of or the things that you suggest that need to be taken care of that they believe that uh, it should be done. So understanding, it's almost like a, a sales game where you're selling yourself but also selling your, your skills to the customer. So dealing with verbal things is that how we talk one-on-one -on -one to each other. But the second thing is, uh, we're dealing with communication, is actually listening. We have to listen to the customer and understand what they are saying, even though they do not have the technical knowledge of what is wrong, or they know that it doesn't work and they need someone to repair their equipment for them. And that's where the technician comes in to listen to them, take that information, and discount the things that maybe. Uh, may not apply to the problem, but still to let the customer know that you will take care of the problem and go forward with it and take into consideration the things they said. Of course, uh, sometimes too much knowledge could be dangerous sometimes, so you don't want to bombard the customer with technical jargon. You hear what they say, but give them back just enough at their level to get them to feel comfortable of what you're communicating to them. But also dealing with communication is the uh, nonverbal things. We hear, we listen, but we react differently. We react in, our, in the ways we uh, uh, turn our head, not uh, looking at them uh, directly. We, uh, we get looking downward as if we don't care about what they are saying. But, so in other words, you have to be uh, in tune to the customer. You have to. Uh, be attentive to their, uh, to their wishes and things like that. And understand that, yes, you are the expert, but at the same time, they are just as important. So, going through those three steps, the verbally uh, listening and nonverbal cues is very important as dealing with customers. And the better you become with that, believe it or not, the better technician would be because you are actually helping the customer and really helping the business too that you're working for. Especially if you go in 
in business for yourself. If you can be the best technician out there and you run customers away, it doesn't make sense to be in business. Other things he's doing is we work with is doing the paperwork. These days, because of technology, we're using a lot more technology to do our job. There's PDAs and laptops, there's because of the internet, we don't even have to go to the job to turn our paperwork in. We can complete uh, our job daily and order supplies online. We can just make phone calls and things. And that is very critical because uh, these days, because of technology, inventory control is based on the correct information we put in. We put a part in, we need to charge the customer for it, but then again, we need to replenish our vehicles, our uh, service trucks with the, uh, the, 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 the parts that we just used so we do not run out of it and be able to um, restore the things that we purchased. So, been able to use computers, understanding how to use it, uh, writing things down, and still using service invoices, writing all the information down, being clear of how we're communicating in the written type of way to be able to uh, give both the customer and our dispatcher on our job what we did so they can put it into the computer for us to, um, to another time when there might be a problem, they know exactly our history of what uh, was done on that piece of equipment. So paperwork is extremely, extremely important. That's goes along with even math skills because we are charging the customers. A lot of times we have to charge taxes, which is a percentage of the amount of parts that we supply to the job. Um, we have to add things up, so we don't want to overcharge the customer, but also we don't want to undercharge them either. So having the math skills, how to uh, figure out percentages and how to um, be able to add things up or subtract things that, of deductions and things like that, how to do that. Usually it's basic math skills. We don't get into too large of uh, uh, math in this field, filling out invoices, but there's times we do need to understand high levels of math, especially when we try and do diagnose systems where we need to use formulas to determine how equipment should be operating. So math skills is extremely important. And especially in going to bigger type of or more advanced type of jobs where even where we had to do heat load calculations where it might take hours to figure out things but we want to be precise because we want to know if the equipment is large enough or small enough for the structure that we are installing it in. So understanding using math skills is part of soft skills because any type of mistakes like that can cause uh, an issue. Uh, with the equipment, how it will run in the future. So, the last thing we're going to discuss is basically ethical behaviors. And that is dealing with our supervisors, dealing with the customer, and matter of fact, even co-workers. Everyone we surrounding us in the job, uh, dealing with the uh, supply houses, the people behind the counters, and being able to be ethical. When they, people trust you, that, I can tell you that is something that you will, uh, that can follow you the rest of your life. If you're unethical and they cannot trust you, that will also follow you too. The best thing in, in the field is to build a relationship with people where you're ethical and they can trust whatever behavior that they say, this is not him because that's not like him. I do not believe it. But when they trust you, they will, that will go farther than even your, uh, your technical skills. You may not be the best technician out there, but if they can trust you when you say, well, I don't understand, but I'll find out, they will trust you knowing that you will do it. So when we go into uh, a field and starting out, building up and developing those soft skills will take us uh, farther than our technical skills. Because we can develop our technical skills. We can get better in time because the more you do something, the better you become at it. But when it comes to soft skills, those things that we can do also. We can build them. We can get better at those things. And uh, uh, the, the more we uh, cognizant of it, understanding that we may not be perfect now, but we will progress as we learn uh, those areas of uh, ethics or communication or taking care of our paperwork. So today, that's one of the biggest things we can learn and in this NIC course, understanding 
how to um, find those skills and and hopefully uh, we'll on the field we'll learn how 